Hello, and welcome back to Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion. This week, we talk with Roman Chiparuka, CEO of Space VIP, about the dawning age of private space flight and what it could mean for the future of humanity. We're also going to take a look at the Viper spacecraft, which will soon scout locations for the return of humans to the moon. Then we'll head out to Mars, hearing about a new study showing water on the red planet may have been doomed from the start. We're also going to take a look at light from a distant galaxy seen as an Einstein ring in a new image from the Hubble Space Telescope. NASA plans to return humans to the moon in the coming years with the Artemis program, which will touch down near the south pole of our planetary companion. This area is largely unexplored, Yet the region appears to be home to large deposits of water ice. The supplies make this area the most tempting property on the moon on which to build a future lunar colony. NASA's Viper spacecraft will touch down near the Nubial crater there, which is thought to be rich in easily accessible sources of water for analysis and testing. Mars is significantly smaller than Earth, and its low mass may be the ultimate cause for the arid conditions found on the red planet today, a new study finds. Early in the history of the solar system, Mars was a water world, home to oceans, rivers, and lakes. Roughly 3.5 billion years ago, the red planet lost its magnetic field, exposing Mars to harsh radiation from the sun, stripping our planetary neighbor of its atmosphere and surface water. Without the mass needed to continue driving its magnetic field, Mars never had a chance to hold on to its atmosphere and water, the study concluded. In December 2020, astronomers released a new image from the Hubble Space Telescope showing the most detailed picture of Einstein ring ever recorded. This phenomenon, the result of gravity bending light like a lens, magnifies the image of a galaxy or other far flung object, and and this one sits about 9.4 billion light years from Earth. That's quite a distance. Examination of this work image shows this family of stars at a time when stellar formation was a thousand times greater than it is today. Looking deep into the universe, we see backwards in time. And the oldest light in the universe holds secrets to how everything around us will, one day, end. Meanwhile, stars, planets, and galaxies dance in an intricate ballet, occasionally giving birth to life. We are a fledgling species, just beginning to visit other worlds. We are a way for the universe to understand itself. The Cosmic Companion strives to bring the universe down to Earth, and we depend on your help to make it happen. For information on subscriptions and ways to donate to this program, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net. Thank you. Next up, we talk with Roman Chiparuka, CEO of Space VIP, about the future of private space flight. This week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, we're happy to be joined by Roman Chiparuka. He is the co-founder and CEO of Space VIP. 
and his company is offering some fantastic opportunities for for people to enjoy the cosmos. Welcome to the show, Roman. Thanks, James. Thanks so much for having me. Glad to be here. Great. Um, just tell us a little bit about what is Space, I, Space VIP and what is it that you're looking to provide? Excellent. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to be here. Uh, space VIP was founded to promote universal space literacy. Uh, by, uh, but by virtue of my background, I own uh, and operate a lifestyle and travel business catering to the ultra high net worth. And in 2018, I was approached by a private space company who... Uh, I'm so sorry, uh, who asked me to uh, assist with uh, promoting missions to the International Space Station for a 10-day mission. I happily obliged, and in November of last year, uh, we brought them the, the final astronaut, uh, thereby making their mission possible. And it became evident really quickly that not many people knew about many things going on in space. Uh, you know, July was a perfect example with uh, Branson and um, Bezos going up in space, and, and and that was predominantly what people focused on. But we created Space VIP to avail all of these exciting opportunities that are possible and that you can do now, like zero gravity flights, uh, analog missions, centrifuge and simulation training. We included space adjacent activities like um, aquanaut training, dives to the Mariana Trench, so we want the public to know that there's so many exciting opportunities that they can take advantage today that don't cost $50 million. Uh, you know, the zero gravity flight that I mentioned is $7,500. While that is expensive as a standalone number, it is certainly not $50 million and, and, and affordable. And I say that in quotes. Right. I mean, but it's within the range of, you know, a luxury cruise. Yes, effectively. For, for instance. Um, so, you know, you talked about, you know, you know, um, being in the uh, adventure industry already, but there's so many ways you could have gone and you're going, you know, partly, you know, you are doing the Aquanaut um, mission, you know, the Aquanaut uh, program, which I think is pretty cool in itself. And I'd like to get back to that later. But what is it that drove you to specifically to space tourism? You know, it was certainly exciting uh, to be the first travel agency to, to to sell a ticket to the International Space Station, which is essentially what we've done by introducing uh, the third and final client. And I thought that the public needed to know about all of these incredible experiences out there, and no one wanted to talk about it. Last This past July was the most exciting July for U.S. space since, I don't know, 1969 when we put a man on the moon. And the only thing that people can talk about is, oh, billionaires are going to space and spending money unnecessarily. That is inherently the wrong narrative. There are so many interesting and exciting things going on. And I wanted to be a part of the conversation. My... Um, experiences in ultra high net worth uh, and truly unique and enriching experiences. And this seemed like the perfect opportunity. And the more I learned about the overview effect, the more passionate I became about the whole thing conceptually. You know, back to the billionaire joyride narrative, which is all the media keeps talking about, I would think that after conversing with, I don't know, at least three dozen astronauts in the last three years, um, and all of the stories that they share about their experience, imagine a person of means, a billionaire or someone of the ultra high net worth going up there, experiencing the overview effect, and then coming down and exacting real change because they have real dollars behind it. So whether it's clean water for everyone or save the coral reefs, whatever your prerogative may be, I think um, it we're able to accomplish that by focusing on space. And I, you know, it's, it's, as you very well know, it just kind of sucks you in and takes a life of its own. And that's why we're both sitting here today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, of course, you know, I think that the overview effect is really being overlooked. So I'd like to expand on that a little bit and talk about how, you know, what, you know, for people who may not be familiar, you know, you may want to, you know, what is the overview effect and how do you see it changing 
society as more people experience it. Sure. Well, the overview effect, as it's known, is the feeling that you have when you see our planet Earth suspended in, in the darkness of, of space and the cosmos. And you're able to see the world, not as you and I see it from our computer and Google Maps with borders and cities. You, you don't see it as a place, with, as a planet with borders, dogmas, conflicts, nonsense. You see it as a beautiful blue planet and there is a sense of interconnectedness uh, that you feel and and I think that's truly impactful. Um, so it's it's a matter of realizing that and then bringing that sentiment back down with you and implementing change. You know, we're wasting trillions of dollars fighting wars over imaginary borders because I think at the end of the day, human beings, myself included, tend to be very self-centered and, and petty. So we think the world revolves around us. Why is there traffic? I'm running late. I, I need this. I need it immediately. There's the sense of immediate gratification, which is rather frustrating. And I think the overview effect can help us put things into perspective. And, you know, people say, oh, I'm just small and irrelevant. You are small in the scheme of things, but you are certainly not irrelevant. And one individual has the power to exact true and, and meaningful change. And when I look at what's going on in the world today, whether it's uh, racism or misogyny and the Me Too movement or Afghanistan, it becomes evident really quickly. And, and by the way, for full disclosure, I am not political, but it's glaringly obvious to me that politics and policies are not alleviating the world of its problems. They are not working. We need a greater catalyst for change. We need a heightened sense of consciousness to really connect with our fellow brothers and sisters and try to look beyond these things that have consumed us in, you know, hatred and, and the depths of um, despair. And I think seeing our planet from a different perspective might just be the catalyst that we need to achieve this higher sense of being and really become the spacefaring species that we're meant to be, as Carl Sagan said many years ago. Right. And of course, I think another thing that people are overlooking is the fact that human widespread human habitation of space can really only be accomplished through international efforts and exactly. so if 50 years from now you're living on a moon base and the structure you're in was built by americans the air filters are supplied by the chinese the russians are developing the communication systems that you depend on who are you going to owe your allegiance to well you know that that's what needs to happen we need to who was it i think yuri milner in his uh, breakthrough starshot initiative um, and as, as you know, he's in the, they're, they're in the process of sending light sails to Alpha Centauri, which is our neighboring galaxy. And in his mission statement, he says, we need to unite as one world to make real progress and real advancements into the universe. And, and that's the point that I think you just brought up. It's a, I'm Russian, you're American, he's Chinese. If you have a great rocket, I have good fuel and he has a great engineer. Let's, let's unite in those efforts so that way we could make real impact as opposed to, oh, America's going to go first and build uh, and, and colonize Mars and then they're going to be rich and every, every other country in the world will feed them grapes as they take baths in their golden bathtubs. What's the, what, what's the point of that? What's the value of that? It just doesn't, you know, world domination, uh, you know, sounds um, sexy, but what do you do with it? It'd be so much more interesting to understand what else is going on in the universe. Surely there are other beings out there. And, and, and I think we do need to look past ourselves. So who would I, you know, being Russian born and a naturalized citizen of the United States and speaking Italian and some Chinese, um, uh, I'd like to consider myself a citizen of, of the planet, um, despite uh, despite some of my different uh, nationalities that I associate with. Um, I, I, I think it's important to unite. And, and at the end of the day, that's the message that we should be promoting rather than billionaire joyrides and them being not good. 
<clears throat> so this is this is a question um, that I've asked of you know a lot of guests, and I, I love getting people's uh, opinions on this. But what drives us as occasionally intelligent apes to explore space and to explore the depths of the ocean? Well, I think it's just the general desire for exploration. You know, I think somebody in some ancient spiritual texts uh, that I've read said, voyaging never stops in this life or in the, in the, in, in the hereafter. And I think it's um, man's uh, curiosity and, and search for meaning that continuously pushes the element. We're just, you know, we're curious apes to, uh, or, or slightly intelligent curious apes that are really interested in what else is out there. Look, 15th or 16th century Europe uh, had loads of problems, but somebody still got on a ship and sailed across the world thinking that they would fall off the edge of the planet. And here we are sitting on this fine continent that someone discovered many years ago. So there will always be problems, but I think it's important to continuously challenge, our, challenge ourselves and continue moving forward. And so... So for someone who signs up for one of your, I'd like to have, first of all, talk a little bit about your different programs that you have for people, uh, the Arthonaut, Aquanaut, uh, Astronaut programs, sure. and, and what goes into preparing, someone preparing for that sort of, that sort of trip. So we created Space VIP in order to make it really easy for anyone in the public to understand what goes on in space and in some of these different experiences. Because if you visit some of these companies' websites, they talk about, you know, the dawn of humanity or, or just these grandiose statements. And we approached it from a very consumer point of view, which is what is it? How much is it? Where is it? How do you train for it? How long is it so I can take off of, of work? Um, and we wanted to ha answer really basic questions so that people could understand exactly what's going on, because right now it's not easily approachable and it is convoluted. And really the ultimate goal of Space VIP is to educate and inspire the next generation of private astronauts. We're in the process of developing, um, you know, the learning component because, yes, you and I know what apogee and overview effect means, but... My wife doesn't, and, and now she looks at me saying, I don't know what an analog mission means, and you shouldn't be throwing that word around like it means, you know, um, frosted flakes in, in, in the morning. And I think the more we encourage and inspire conversation about that, um, whether it's at the kitchen table in a family discussing and the kids say, hey, I learned this in class or I heard this on uh, the Cosmic Companion podcast, um, and their parents read something in the Washington Post or the New York Times, then it becomes um, multi-layered and people are engaging in the same kind of conversation and, and learning more. So the reason that we broke it down and we created the, the concept of Earth or not because we wanted a cool way to describe experiences on Earth. So we were just like, astronaut, aquanaut, Earth or not sounds good. And, you know, we... We would do serious work, but we don't take ourselves very seriously or we like to have a good time with this because that's, uh, you know, essentially who the co-founders are behind Space VIP. So we just wanted to break it down in experiences on Earth, experiences above Earth and experiences um, in the ocean so that it would be easy for people to understand what's going on. And that's further to this whole notion of making it palatable and digestible for the general public to understand this stuff. Yeah. You know, when we had a, when I talked with Neil deGrasse Tyson on this show, he said that science needs an advertising agency. Of course, and, there's no and, there's uh, no one talking about it in, in, in this kind of cool and really interesting way. We, in fact, we recently funded the philanthropic arm of Space VIP and we're calling it Space Prize, 
which will be a global contest to promote women in STEM. Uh, so we'll probably be rolling that out in the next six to 12 months. And we wanna go, the plan is to be worldwide. We want to go to all of the schools all over the world. And you know what, if you're a young lady in Morocco and you think your future is hurting uh, the sheep because you live at the base of the Atlas Mountains, we want to encourage the fact that that doesn't necessarily need to be your future. And we have the funding to, to send you on a zero gravity flight or on a space perspective balloon or on astronaut training with or beat and all of these amazing experiences that are out there. And yes, it's we space VIP is that advertisement that space needs. Nobody, people have attempted to do it in, in a couple of different ways, but we will actually do it we're, we're doing it in fact it's great and you know just you're talking about people not being stuck into typical life of where they grew up you know it reminds me of the movie october sky i've not and, seen that all right and it's a story of homer hickam who is a boy growing up in a coal mining community in west virginia i believe who you know, became fascinated when, when the Russians launched Sputnik, just became fascinated with space and grew up to become a rocket engineer. And, you know, so I just, you know, I think one of the things you're doing really is providing the opportunity for more people to become their own advertising agency for science, you know? The, oppor the opportunity uh, and the inspiration, more importantly, because maybe they've never thought that they, you know, maybe someone really likes uh, or aspires to be a lawyer or a designer and have an interest in space. Guess what? You can be a designer in the space industry right. and, 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 and do incredible things, or you can blend your passion for space and law by being an attorney for NASA or one of these aerospace companies. I just think it's it's important to avail these sorts of ideas so people and, and the young people um, can start to dream and to imagine themselves doing some of these incredible things. Did I think five years ago that I would be that, that I would be involved so deeply in in space? No, but I've learned in, in my professional career to follow the writing on the wall. And it's almost like I didn't choose space. Space chose me. And, 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 and the universe and the universe took me in, in a direction and I'm, and I'm following along and I'm executing. And you know what, at this point I'm working three jobs. I'm working my Roman and Erica business, the space VIP business, and now the space prize business. And it's fascinating because the workload is so extensive, but it's fueled by this passion and desire and all of these incredible people that I'm meeting. So it's kind of feeding me while exhausting me at the same time. <laughs> But you, but you know about that better than anyone, James. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly know the feeling. Now, one of the things I love that you're doing is Spaceship Neptune. Yes. You're going to, George, um, first of all, I'd love to have you tell people a little bit about that and, sure. and what people can experience with that. Excellent. Thank you. Spaceship Neptune is the capsule uh, by Space Perspective, which is a company that specializes in hydrogen balloons. So imagine an eight-person capsule. Here's a capsule attached to a balloon that flows, uh, floats 20 miles above the Earth's surface. And it's meant to be a six hour experience. So you're gonna take off uh, from Florida at about four o'clock in the morning. It takes uh, two hours to get to the uh, necessary height. And then you get there just at about 6 a.m. So you're seeing the curvature of the Earth and then the sun starts to come up. So as you're in this capsule, which by the way has restrooms and refreshments, Yes, for 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 that length of time, right? You're not just opening the door and uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, 
and and you get to experience the sunrise over the Earth's surface, and then it's about two hours to come down. So six hours in in total. It's one hundred twenty five thousand uh, per seat, and it's eight people to a capsule, so it becomes a uh, uh, million dollar uh, full takeover capsule. And they're set, or their plans are to start going up in late twenty twenty four. And we're terribly excited. We're in talks with several artists uh, and musicians to go up there and start to capture um, start to capture and, and create because the only photographs and images that we have of the Earth from space are by NASA trained photographers who, while very capable, are not uh, creatives in, in, in my mind. So imagine a famous violinist or a photographer going up there, capturing images and creating something beautiful and then bringing it back down um, to earth. I think those sorts of images or those sounds um, will speak volumes. Um, you know, you and I could go back and forth for hours talking about our opinions and what we think is the right way to go about things. But once people see it in a different light, I think their perspective might be changed. So I think there's incredible opportunity and we're really excited uh, to work with Space Perspective. And the other thing that I wanna mention is that there's been a buying frenzy and they pre-sold uh, the first 65 or 70 of their um, capsules. So I'm seeing the same kind of buying frenzy as initially happened with Richard Branson when he first launched Virgin Galactic. So get your tickets today, folks. <laughs> so uh, just, just have to ask this, we can go up and see the curvature of the Earth so clearly. Thought of offering a free ticket to the heads of the Flat Earth Society? Hmm, I'll have to get back to you on that, James. <laughs> and now we go to commercial. <laughs> Great, and finally, where can people who are interested in learning more learn more about space, I space VIP and everything else you're doing? please visit spacevip.com or follow us on social media. Instagram is join space VIP. We're consistently updating and uploading new information. There is so much data that we've synthesized and aggregated on spacevip.com where you can see the operators uh, that are offering all of these amazing um, experiences. And, and if we can help open up doors or educate anyone further, uh, please do reach out to us we're we're looking for interns for our space prize which is the non-for-profit arm so if anyone has the bandwidth to engage please reach out to us as well we'd, we'd love to know you great thanks so much for being on the show roman it was great talking with you oh it was a great pleasure thank you james all right and that was uh roman chiparukas uh co-founder and ceo of space vip hurrah Visit with us each week on Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion as we bring the cosmos down to Earth and scientists directly in your homes with fun and informative interviews. Next week, we're going to take a look at the future of robotics and artificial intelligence in space, talking with Trey Smith and Jose Benavides from NASA. Make sure to visit with us on the 5th of October to watch this fascinating interview. And subscribe to our VIP newsletter to see every episode of this show one day early, together with advanced viewings of our comics, jokes, and a whole lot more. Now, we depend on support from viewers just like you. Yes, you. For ways to help support this program, including VIP subscriptions, please visit thecosmiccompanion.net forward slash support. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and keep your wonder alive. If you enjoyed this episode of Astronomy News with the Cosmic Companion, please download and share the episode on YouTube. Facebook video, or your favorite podcast provider. Remember, you can watch every episode of the show at thecosmiccompanion.tv. For more details on space and astronomy news, please visit thecosmiccompanion.com or thecosmiccompanion.net.
This has been a Cosmic Companion presentation, darling.